Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura and I am a real estate investor and Airbnb host and I'm here to show you everything that you need to know to build wealth through short-term rentals. Welcome back to my channel. Do you want to know the secret to starting and growing an Airbnb business so that it's passive, it takes you much less time to run, and it's poised to grow over time? Then today's video is for you. The tips I'm going to share in this video are going to make the difference between burning out and building a business that can grow and is sustainable over time. When you go into a short-term rental business, you need to understand that you're not just doing real estate investing, but you're starting a hospitality business, which is a completely different ballgame. And that's going to include things like guest communication, managing a team that is going to include your cleaner, handyman, landscaper, and then contractors for other major services like plumbing and electricity. You're also gonna to have to stay competitively priced within your market. And you're gonna to have to have SOPs or standard operating procedures for each of these systems to make sure that your business is running smoothly. I'll talk a little bit more about the SOPs that I use, but if you want me to go in further depth in another video, then I'm happy to do that. Just let me know down in the comments. So once you understand that you are in the hospitality business, in addition to being a real estate investor, the next thing that you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to have to learn how to run a hospitality business. That's why I really recommend for every new Airbnb host out there is starting off do the work yourself, run it yourself, rather than hire a property manager to do it for you. And that's because you really wanna learn what works for you and what doesn't and how you wanna run your business before you hand it off to someone else. You're gonna to have to think through how you're gonna respond when guests inquire and they ask for a discount or when something goes wrong with their stay and they ask for a refund or you have a problem that happens while a guest stays that you have to fix right away? Or what about when your cleaner gets sick or otherwise doesn't clean your property well? How are you gonna deal with that? You're gonna need policies and procedures for all of those different scenarios so that when they happen, you're not scrambling and you've got some steps to follow to mitigate the situation. Then the other set of things that you have to set up processes and systems for your supplies. For example, toilet paper, shampoo, conditioner, paper towels, coffee, and any other items that you provide to your guests so that they have a comfortable stay and that are gonna get consumed, how are you gonna keep those in stock? And how are you gonna make sure that they don't run out while the guest is staying there? So these are all of the details that you are gonna to have to think through and plan ahead for so that your business runs really, really smoothly. And that's why I really, really recommend that you run your business yourself at first so you can figure all of those things out before handing it off to someone else to run. Another reason why it's so important to run your own business is that property managers may not have as much interest to optimize your business and make it profitable and efficient the way that you would. For them, you know, you may just be another customer, another client, and they may not be interested in making sure that everything is run really, really well. So that's another reason why you want to take the time to set up your business exactly the way that you want it so that if you do hand it off to someone else to run or you hire someone to help you, they're going to do it exactly the way that you've designed it. And so this gets to my next point, which is only until you have gotten your business fully optimized is when you should think about handing it off to someone else to run. And what do I mean by that? So not only do you have your team in place and they're working really well, you have figured out your uh, supply of stock. It's always in stock and, and there are no problems with it running out but you've also completely dialed in your guest communications and everything is smoothly running by the time you're ready to outsource. That way, when you hire property managers, if you go that route, they are just going to be implementing the policies and procedures that you've already put into place and that you already know work really well. And if you ever do outsource it, I recommend that you will never go completely hands-off. For example, you want to remain as a host on Airbnb so that you have access to all of the guest communications and you can make sure that the communication is friendly, that it's helpful, and it's the way that you would want it to be done. So how do you do all of this? How do you set up all of the proper systems and policies and procedures so that your business runs really, really smoothly? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about next. 
So there are three different steps that you'll need to put into place. So you're gonna to wanna to watch all the way through to the end of this video so that you get the complete information. The first step, is you're gonna to wanna to automate the right parts of your business. One huge part that you wanna automate is guest communications. I've got five different types of emails that I send to my guests depending on where they are in the process. And they are a confirmation of their booking and this lists how many guests, the date, and it asks a really important question if they're bringing any pets. Now, at all of my listings, I allow pets. And so I wanna make sure that they know that and that they've indicated that on their reservation because I do charge a pet fee that accounts for the additional cleaning that's required in addition to the additional supplies that I provide for pets. The second communication I send are check-in instructions and that just tells the guests how they access the property and then any important information about parking in that message. The third message that I send to guests is a note asking them how they like their stay and if they have any questions. And I send that the first morning after uh, they have stayed. The fourth message I send is checkout instructions. And that's usually about five or 6 p.m. the evening before they check out. And it just says what they should do with their trash, with their recycling and how to lock up before they leave. And then the fifth and final message that I send to guests is if they haven't already given me their review, I send them a reminder to uh, let us know if they have had a five-star experience by giving us a review. And I have it set in my communication system that they only get that message if they haven't already reviewed us. So that's the first part of the business that needs to be fully automated. The second is pricing. And I use a smart pricing software so that my base price, that is the price at which uh, it may fluctuate based on demand, based on whether it's a holiday or not, um, it may change. I wanna set my base price so that it is competitive with the rest of the market for the same bedroom, the same bathroom count, and a similar location as mine, so that I'm not too high or too low. I use Price Labs for this, but I also, within a 14-day window, manually adjust my prices to make sure that I am fully occupied for uh, those two weeks. So I will adjust based on if I have some vacancies, I may drop the price. Um, if I have, say, uh, a three-day stay and then a gap and then a two-day stay, I might like give a really big discount for that empty day in between to entice someone to stay. So I'm managing those 14 days to make sure that I am fully, fully booked. Okay, so the second step that you need to take to get fully automated is to establish your standard operating procedures or SOPs. You can turn these into checklists and they should detail what tasks need to be completed and in what order. And I set these up for my cleaner. I set these up for um, my landscaper. I set these up for a property manager. Even though I manage all of my own properties, I have a set of standard operating procedures that I follow to make sure that I'm uh, doing everything that I need to do. So for every role that it takes to run your business, you want to have an SOP with a series of steps so that it's very clear uh, who is responsible for what and when they need to take these tasks on. The great thing about SOPs is that you can also really easily turn them into checklists like I do for my cleaners. I have a checklist and it's on the inside of our supply closet where we have all of our um, additional uh, stock of supplies and our cleaning materials. They have a checklist and they uh, have a, they're laminated and our cleaner can just check those off and then take a photo of that so that I know for each uh, clean that she's done all of the tasks. And it's a really good way to have accountability for my cleaner. Okay, so the third is to create an accountability system to make sure that your systems are really well run. So I just kind of talked about one uh, regarding the checklist for my cleaner. She checks it off and then takes a photo of it or just takes a photo of the rooms after she's cleaned them. That's one way to make sure that there's accountability for the things that I need done. Another thing that I do is I have a monthly checklist for the property manager and my partner and I, we go through each one of our properties and we are checking things like our supplies, how is the stock? How is our uh, air conditioner and heater working? How is the plumbing working? Does anything need repair in the house? Any of the furniture? Is any of the paint chipped? 
just making sure that each area is in the best condition that it can be. And this helps us catch any issues before they become a problem for the guest and it helps us keep the property in tip top condition. I also check for things like light bulbs, do they need to be replaced, batteries in remotes, and making sure, again, that these things don't fail while a guest is there. The other thing I do, and this is something newer that I just started, is to review your communication with your guests. And you really wanna check for tone, are you being friendly, and you wanna check for helpfulness. I know that sometimes when I have responded to the same question from multiple guests, sometimes I can kinda of come across as a little abrupt, and so my partner, who is also my co-host, he'll look at the messages and he'll say, hey, you know, for this guest, you were a little curt, you know, you could be a little nicer here, just to have that additional check, uh, additional pair of eyes to make sure that I'm communicating in the way um, that I want uh, my guests to feel. Like I want them to feel welcomed, I want them to feel very comfortable and that they've gotten everything that they needed. And so having another set of eyes to review those messages really, really helps to make sure that I'm providing that. Okay, so then the final thing that um, I'm always checking is, and I've already talked about this, but making sure that I'm fully booked, especially within the immediate 14 day window. So every single day in the morning, um, I or my partner are looking at price labs to see what gaps we have, and then we will set any manual discounts that we wanna do through Airbnb. And, and that really helps us to rank high in the search algorithm and get booked. And so that's just one other system that we put in place to make sure that we are maximizing the revenue potential of each of our listings. So that's it. Those are the things that I put in place to really maximize the efficiency and the profitability of my short-term rental business. I gave you a ton of information in this video and I mentioned the guest communications. I also mentioned the standard operating procedures. If knowing more detail about how I um, put these together for my guests, as well as for the management of my properties, let me know down in the comments and I can do something a bit more in depth but I'm also gonna make available a copy of one of my standard operating procedures to you completely for free. Um, if you just wanna look down in the comment box below and you'll see a link for that. Is there anything else you wanna know about building wealth through short-term rentals? Let me know down in the comments. I hope today's video was helpful. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.